First question is from Lean Queen. Is the fat burning zone a real thing? Oh man, this thing's still around. Yeah, I Lean was Queen Vizine. as a trainer in in the in, in you know the late '90s, right when I first started. One of the first things that we were taught was that there was a a target heart rate zone, yeah. and the target heart rate zone you want to stay in. So that you burn. God forbid you like move a little bit. Out. Yeah, you want to burn body fat. If you yeah. go under the target heart rate, you're not doing much. And if you go over it, you're burning muscle. Yeah, yeah. And so we would see, and it was really just a sales. I'm, I'm guilty of using yeah. that like crazy. Well, I didn't know though. I believed everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Me. I didn't. Oh, I, had I didn't. Trainers that were adamant about this. Yeah, no, I totally. One hundred percent. And so I remember one day I was like, you know, I was preaching this, and this is how I talk to people on cardio. This is literally, I'd approach people and be like, Oh, hi, Mister. You know, are you in your target heart rate zone? What's that? Oh, it's the fat burning zone. You burn more fat. The acids. Yeah. I, felt, I felt felt like Keep I was up real this smart. Pace, you die. Yeah, and I'd sell you know whatever. Um, at, later on, I actually did some math. This was like maybe a few years later, and I said, "Hmm, if I train in my because target heart rate is not super high intensity. It's not low intensity. It's it's, it's also it's some, moderate. It's kind of somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. And what the when you look at the studies, what they show is a greater percentage of calories come from fat in a particular zone. By the way, this is super general because it's very different from person to person. But within a certain zone, you burn more a greater percentage of calories from fat. Now, the percentage difference isn't that big. It's like five more percent, right? But we sold it anyway. But then I went and I did the math and I said, if I train at moderate intensity and I burn 300 calories and 50%, I'm making up a number, but let's say 50% came from fat, that's 150 calories from fat. Right. If I train at a higher intensity... And I train at, and I burn, let's say, 450 calories, but only 49% or 48% of my calories come from fat. I'm still burning more fat. Right. And then, of course, when you really learn about calories in versus calories out, it doesn't matter. In fact, mm -hmm. if you fast and do cardio, a greater percentage of your calories will come from fat, from stored fat. But then if you eat later, it doesn't matter. It all balances out. So really, at the end of the day... <laughs> Doesn't make a big difference. Now, what is your theory on somebody? Let's say, let's take like a competitor, for example, who is you know hovering. They're coming in their their final three or four weeks. They are sitting around four or five percent body fat, extremely lean, and they have been low calorie for the last three four weeks. So they've been in a debt. They're constantly in a deficit right now because they're leaning out for a show. Is it more advantageous for this person to do high intensity cardio for thirty minutes to an hour versus like walking for thirty minutes to an hour? I think, and I would love to hear your opinion, Adam, because you're obviously you competed. Uh, but the but you know instinctually, what what I would say is it depends on how depleted and how stressed the person is. If they're going into competition, they're probably super dieted. They've been dieted for a while. They're four percent, five percent body fat. Yeah. A lot of high intensity cardio probably would overwhelm their system and wouldn't make them look or feel good. And here's the thing with 4% body fat, a couple pounds of water looks like you gain 3% body fat. It's right. such a big difference. So, I mean, what, what's your opinion? So, on that's it? my th my theory. And that I would walk, right? So, I was. You would I, go low. Yeah. Because I'm already. It's the only time that you would catch me doing uh, any sort of intense cardio is if I was coming from a very fed state, if I was high calorie. And I was still trying to burn off a lot of calories, so I didn't put on a bunch of extra body fat or any have additional calories. I'm trying to burn additional calories. Mm -hmm. But when I am in that much of a deficit and I've been that low and I know that I'm that high of stress, me, my theory is that, okay, if the body's got so low of body fat percentage as it is and I'm trying to shave the last bit of it, I have no, I have no stored energy because I've been depleted for mm -hmm. the last three or four days in a row. If I go out and do something extremely intense, this is where my body would probably tap into and utilize muscle because it doesn't have a lot of resources and I'm stressing the fuck out of it. So mm -hmm. my thought process is, okay, in that state, it makes sense for somebody to use like low intensity or target heart rate type of training and only in that. Anybody else, you got a client who's 20 pounds overweight or above, which is most people that's mm -hmm. trying to lose weight. It's a calorie game yeah. where we, we want to get as low, get as burn as many calories as we possibly can during this period I of time. I just look at it as another one of those gimmick things that they're going to hold on to, just like we mentioned earlier about Epoch. Uh, I've actually seen a lot of circuit training type of uh, franchises like back in the day trying to organize their entire uh, workouts and everything around this fat burning zone and uh, really trying to, to make sure everybody kept you know their heart rate down. They like, didn't want to go too rigorous. They wanted to kind of pull people back up and and just maintain this. But um, yeah, it for for the most part, it was like. It, 
you you know at the end of the day like like you'd said it's a wash like whatever you know your calorie intake is and then your calorie burn at the end of the day is it is for everybody else it is for most people for the average person right like everybody like you're talking about the one percent yeah when you get down to four percent body fat like every little thing can make you look different this is the the big difference is how is it going to make you look and feel on stage and again if you're four percent body fat i've gotten down as low as five and i know that i could look like i gained three percent body fat just because my body was holding water right that doesn't happen at 12 percent body fat you, right you can't tell it and, and my theory is this is that you, you the body always wants to utilize you know sugar first as fuel right it wants to use that first as the primary source but if you've been l- running low and you don't have any of that as a source the next primary source is fat mm-hmm. if you don't have very much of that and then in addition to that, you push the body really hard. My thought is the body will adapt and pare down muscle That's in that situation. Right. So in that situation, you are stressing the body. You don't have very much. You have no stored energy and fuel. You've got very little fat as fuel in there. You're already in this thin line. And then you're pushing the body in addition. It's going to pare down yeah. muscle. You know, I know a lot of people that think that you get all depleted or they'll do fasted cardio and then like they'll eat a lot later. Yeah. And it's just like, it's a wash. No, here, here's the way you should view cardio. Um, view cardio two different ways. One, imp- for health. So- Okay, I'm going to do this for health, in which case, do the form of cardio that you enjoy the most because you're the most likely to stay consistent doing the one you enjoy the most. Don't worry about all these nuances and splitting hairs. If you're doing cardio for health, which is a great reason to do it, just do what you enjoy. So if you like hiking, there's your cardio. You like swimming, there you go. You like to row, there's your cardio. You like to do you know salsa dancing, there's your cardio. If you're, Here's the other way to look at it. It's for athletic uh, performance. If cardio is for athletic performance, if you're an athlete and you're doing it to improve your VO2 max or your performance, then you can start to really program it, right? If I want to maximize my VO2 max, then it's much, I got to be much more specific with the kind of training that I do. Other than that, that's it. That's pretty much it. For for 99.9% of people listening, Everything else, don't worry about. If it's for health, just do your favorite type, and you'll be totally fine. Well, this is if an, it's for performance, get specific. This is another reason why I'm like a fan of like you know s- you know a slow jog or a walk for your source of kind of cardiovascular training is because that it's more sustainable. Yeah. If you are somebody who gets into the like I'm going to go kit the stairmaster mm-hmm. for an hour and just be drenched in sweat and kill yourself, yeah, you might have some motivation for a few months leading up to Vegas or that wedding or whatever like that. But the likelihood that you're going to maintain this stairmaster for an hour. Really really intense Mm -hmm. every single day for the rest of your life is very low. But you know what? I can most certainly discipline myself to walk for an hour. Like that's not Whatever you enjoy. Right. exactly. Exactly.